numbers are staggering. 3,000 cars a day added to already clogged roads. That's 20,000 more vehicles a week, or 1 million cars a year, all squeezed into China's capital city. Already the world's most populous country, China's 1.3 billion is 40 times the population of Canada. Beijing alone is home to 20 million. That is more than five times as many people in one city than currently living in all of Alberta. In many ways, the communist country and the populist province are polar opposites. Yet, the relationship between the two jurisdictions has never been stronger or more important. Nowhere is that interdependency more evident than in oil and gas. Simply put, China needs massive amounts of energy to fuel its crush of new vehicles and sustain its unabated economic growth. And the country is looking to Alberta's oil sands to feed its insatiable petroleum appetite. Alberta and China are uniquely tied because of China's large demand, large need for oil. Alberta has huge oil sands resources. About 20%. In the last 15 months, three Chinese corporations spent billions to purchase stakes in the northern Alberta oil sands. PetroChina, Sinopec, and the China Investment Corporation have all signed deals with Alberta based oil sands operators. The state owned companies are hungry for a big piece of the second largest proven energy reserves in the world next to Saudi Arabia. Based on our own observation, you know, uh, China needs to have more oil and they're not getting enough of it. So um, right there, they are approaching many countries that have oil reserves. Okay? And of course, Canada is a, is a good potential partner because you know, uh, Canada and China naturally have a very good relationship. That good relationship has also spread to tourism. Earlier this year, China granted Canada what is called approved destination status. That means Chinese travel agents can now organize group tours to Canada. It also allows Canadian provinces and travel companies to market in China, something previously prohibited. Well, I think it's a great opportunity uh, from an economic perspective for Canada, uh, but also for clearly for national parks and for local communities that are close or in national parks. I think it is a new market. We've seen a significant decline in the American tourists, for example, over the last few years. We've seen some changes in the Japanese market also. So uh, this is a great opportunity for all of us involved in the tourism industry uh, in terms of a, a, a solid potential in terms of uh, economic generator in Canada. Now, how big of business are we talking about here? Chinese officials estimate the amount, number of tourists from China heading to Canada in the next few years will increase 30% year over year, with each of those tourists expected to spend 1000 to $2,000 Canadian at tourism hotspots or across the country. And for Alberta, places like Banff, Lake Louise, Jasper, even Calgary, Edmonton, that can add up to a huge, huge benefit for the communities. While a flood of tourists may be new, the flow of people between China and Alberta isn't. Calgary's Chinatown is celebrating its centennial. Chinese is the largest visible minority group in the city and province, with more than 75,000 people of Chinese ethnicity living in Calgary alone. So there is that, there is that relationship that has developed between Canada. So Canada is not a, not a, a foreign country to, to, to Chinese anymore. On a recent trade mission, more evidence the new China-Alberta relationship goes beyond tourism and energy. The province is looking to China for skilled immigrants needed to keep Alberta's economy running smoothly. Uh, China has a highly skilled workforce as well. The educational system over here uh, uh, is focused on uh, trades and skills that we will be needing in the future. So we definitely cannot dismiss China. So are China and Alberta complete opposites? Maybe. Strong partners? Definitely. Today, China matters to Alberta, and Alberta, it seems, matters to China. Jason Fiquette. CalgaryHerald.com, Beijing, China.